Hey everyone, welcome back to the Riftsphere channel. In this video, we're going to install Qubit Tor in following the suggestions from Trash Guides. I know it may seem long and a bit boring, but bear with me, and you'll have Qubit Tor in set up just right. Let's start by setting up our folders. If you followed the preparation video, you should already have the downloads and torrents folders in your share. Now, create the complete and incomplete folders. Additionally, we'll add a watch folder for manually adding torrents. Next, head over to the apps tab in Unraid and search for Qubit Torrent. I'll be using the Binhex version with built-in VPN support. It should work with most VPN providers and has excellent compatibility with private internet access. If you choose a different version, the container setup may vary, but the configuration should remain the same. The container name is a bit long, so let's change it to simply Qubit Torrent. Set the network to our own custom network. For Qubit Torrent to work, your client must be accessible from the internet. If you're not using a VPN, you'll need to forward a port on your router and configure it here. However, since we're using a VPN, we'll remove those two ports. Your VPN provider should handle the port configuration on the VPN connection. For private internet access, the script will be used to open and configure the necessary port. If you're using a different provider, it's best to consult their documentation for instructions on opening a port, as we'll need that later. Port 8080 is the default port for the web UI, but SAB NCBD also requires that port. Let's remove this for now, and add a changed one back later. Also let me know in the comments if you will be using SAB NCBD, if you only use torrents, or prefer other programs. Port 8118 is used for Provoxy, the proxy server that allows sharing the VPN connection with other applications. Since we won't be using Provoxy, we'll remove this port, as any open port can be a security concern. The path is incorrect, so we'll remove that as well. We'll add our own path later. Let's keep VPN enabled set to yes, since that's the main reason we chose this container. Now, enter your VPN username and password. I'll be using private internet access, so I'll select that provider. If you have a different provider, choose the appropriate option. If you encounter any issues with your provider, don't hesitate to seek help on the forums. If your provider supports WireGuard, select that option. Otherwise, choose OpenVPN. In most cases, you can leave the VPN options empty unless your provider specifies any specific settings. Strict port forward is an option specific to private internet access and is used for port configuration. Keep it set to yes. It won't have any effect for other VPN providers. Since we won't be using Provoxy, keep that option set to no. If you decide to use it in the future, you can switch it to yes and add port 8118 back. The web UI port allows us to change the internal port for Qubit Torrent. As mentioned earlier, SAB NZBD will be using port 8080, so we'll change this to 8081. The LAN network setting is for security, determining which connections Qubit Torrent allows. Without going into too much detail, Click on your server name at the top of the page to copy the server IP. Scroll back down and paste the server IP, replacing the last digits with a 0 followed by 24. This setup should work for most configurations. If it doesn't, you can use the less secure option in the description and seek help on the forums if needed. Unless you have specific named server requirements, you can leave those as default. The VPN input and output ports are used when sharing the VPN with other containers. Although we won't be using them now, let's keep them in place. We don't need to enable debug mode unless we encounter issues. Let's change the UMAS to 022 for increased security. 
the PUID and PGID can remain at 99 and 100 respectively. Now, let's add back what we removed earlier. Click on the plus button. Set the config type to port, name it web UI, and set both the container and host ports to 8081. Verify that it's for TCP, then click add. Click the plus button again. Keep the config type as path. Give it a name like download. While most of our other programs will need access to our entire share, including media and downloads, Qubit Torrent only needs access to the downloads folder. We'll limit access as much as possible. Click on the host path and browse to our share and torrents folder. Since the location needs to match our other tools, copy everything starting from data and set that as the container path. Set the access mode to read write and click add. If we expand the more settings section, we can also set the app data path. Clear the existing entry and navigate to your app data share. Add Qubit Torrent as the app data path. As a final step, scroll all the way to the top and enable the advanced view. Change the web UI setting from 8080 to 8081 so our web UI button works correctly. Scroll down and hit apply. The container should be created, but there's a chance it won't be running initially. This is likely due to missing VPN configuration files. Check the logs as they will indicate what's missing. Start by obtaining the configuration files from your VPN provider. Go to Shares, select your app data share, and export it under the SMB header. Navigate to your app data share, the Qubit Torrent folder and place the configuration files in either the OpenVPN or WireGuard folder. Once done, stop exporting your app data share. You can now start the Qubit Torrent container from the Docker tab. It may take a moment to connect to the VPN. But as soon as the logs indicate it's listening on port 8081, you should be able to access the web UI. Don't forget to enable auto start. Congratulations. We've successfully installed Qubit Torrent with the correct paths for hard linking utilizing our VPN connection, and made changes to the port to be used by SAP and ZBD later. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.